Turning to our top story this hour, the migrant crisis at the border between Poland and Belarus is intensifying. In the latest, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of orchestrating an unprecedented wave of migrant influx. He calls the crisis an attack that threatens to destabilize the European Union. Trzeba z całą mocą podkreślić, że bezpieczeństwo nasze, bezpieczeństwo naszej wschodniej granicy jest w bardzo brutalny sposób naruszane. Że to jest chyba wyjątkowa, to jest z pewnością wyjątkowa sytuacja, pierwsza taka od 30 lat, kiedy możemy powiedzieć, że bezpieczeństwo, integralność naszych granic jest w tak brutalny sposób atakowana i brutalny sposób testowana. Thousands of migrants are trying to enter Poland from Belarus illegally. The desperate migrants are stuck in freezing weather on the Belarus-Poland border. Troops are present on both sides of the border. This has raised fears of a confrontation. The European Union has vowed more sanctions against Belarus. The EU has accused Lukashenko of using gangster-style tactics. Meanwhile, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has rejected accusations of provoking the migrant crisis and playing a blame game of sorts. During an interview with Russia's National Defense magazine, Lukashenko claimed that citizens of Poland, Germany and Ukraine facilitated the transit of migrants to Europe. He has refused to help Poland in handling the crisis. He has also blamed the West for launching what he calls a hybrid war against Belarus. You have to fight against sanctions, against Belarus. You have to go on a hybrid war against Belarus. Take the news, the economy, the politics, the military, the military, the military, the military. It's a hybrid war. And you, the murderers, the murderers, you want me to protect you from migrants, in particular? No, Igor, you answer. Ну, Игорь, ну ответь, вот как человек на этот вопрос, что я нелогично рассуждаю, вы это устроили, получите. Meanwhile, European Council President Charles Michel has demanded a rapid solution to the crisis. He has called on the EU states to support Poland, Latvia and Lithuania. In the beginning of October, 12 EU countries, including Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Denmark, Austria and Hungary, demanded the EU to partially finance the physical barriers at the border. However, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen rejected this demand. We are facing a brutal hybrid attack on our EU borders. Belarus is weaponizing migrants' distress in a cynical and shocking way. At our last European Council, we condemned and decided to respond to these attacks, and we asked the Commission to propose all necessary measures in line with EU law and international obligations. We have opened the debate on the EU financing of physical border infrastructure, and this must be settled rapidly because Polish and Baltic borders are EU borders, one for all and all for one. A video obtained by Reuters shows the condition of young children in a migrant camp. Polish border guards detained a group of migrants from a camp. The group of 15 men, women and children were guided out of the forest by Polish border guards. They were reportedly taken to a detention centre. Humanitarian workers at the United Nations say they are alarmed by the situation at the Belarus-Poland border. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, and the International Organization for Migration say they have been in contact with governments in Warsaw and Minsk. They say they are calling for an urgent resolution of the situation.
Two agencies said that yesterday reports surfaced of a large group of migrants and refugees, among them women and children, on the Belarusian side of the border, moving towards the international border crossing with Poland uh, named Bru Ruzgi. They allegedly uh, settle in a make makeshift camp in the vicinity of the border overnight. The two agencies have been in contact with both governments in um, Warsaw and in Minsk and are calling for an urgent resolution of the situation and immediate and unhindered access to the group of uh, people um, seeking help. Now, Stuart Smith is joining us live from Moscow for more on this story. Stuart, the Polish prime minister has called the Russian president the mastermind of this whole migrant crisis. Has there been any reaction from the Kremlin to this accusation? Yeah, it's not the first time Poland has accused Russia of being behind the actions, uh, the true actions of Lukashenko, the president in Belarus. The Kremlin denies it's got anything to do with this. What it does say is it's watching very closely what's going on at the border. And the foreign minister in Russia, Sergei Lavrov, says that the West does hold responsibility here for uh, causing, ultimately causing the migrant crisis in the first place by uh, invading in Iraq uh, at the beginning of the century, ultimately destabilizing the Middle East and ultimately, therefore, takes some of the blame. He's also pointed to Poland's refusal to accept asylum cases as another reason that Poland is partly to blame for this. Lukashenko, a president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, and president of Russia, um, Mr. Vladimir Putin, did discuss over telephone the current situation. We got very few details about that call on Tuesday, but they said they're keeping contact and they exchanged views. We're likely to get more information as to exactly how the Kremlin sees Belarus and Poland uh, later today when the Belarusian foreign minister is here in Moscow to talk to his counterpart, Russia's Sergei Lavrov. And meanwhile, Belarusian President Lukashenko has also denied any involvement in the crisis and in fact accused Polish border forces of beating migrants. What do you have to say about that? Yes, overnight, we know that the Polish defence minister said it was a very busy night for Polish border guards. There are about 800 migrants in one centralised camp on the border. That was quiet overnight, no action there. But consider there are uh, estimated a t number of 2,000 other migrants along the border with Poland and Belarus. And there were two groups who did attempt and managed to get over the fence overnight. They've been sent back to Belarus, according to Poland. Uh, so there are worries that this could happen again or that uh, the migrant situation could escalate over the course of today. Poland says Belarus is helping practically by providing tools and equipment to get through the razor wire fence which now 20,000 Polish security forces are guarding. It estimates there are about 12 to 14,000 migrants elsewhere in Belarus ready to cross. Lukashenko says that this is a problem of the West's making, that he is not supporting these migrants but consider back in May in an address to Parliament, he did note that Belarusian sanctions against Belarus mean it has little option but to, for example, uh, stop trying to fulfil its obligations relating to drugs and migration. So the EU was warned something like this could happen, although now he does insist that he is not using this for political purposes. Now, you mentioned sanctions and the EU is preparing to impose more sanctions against Belarus over the crisis. What can be expected on that front? That's right. Next week on Monday, EU foreign ministers are meeting. That could be the earliest time that further sanctions are imposed against Belarus. Already a plethora of sanctions against Belarusian individuals and companies for what the EU calls human rights violations in Belarus, with prisoners, uh, political prisoners being tortured uh, and arrested. Now it could come again, a new wave of sanctions. Uh, one EU diplomat saying that these will be directed towards airlines and countries that help facilitate uh, migration flows to Belarus. So not all of the airlines coming from the Middle East are Belarusian airlines. Also, some Russian and Turkish airlines have been allegedly bringing these migrants from the Middle East to Belarus. They could be the target of sanctions, as well as the uh, people, the high-level ministers in Belarus, responsible for this migration policy. And besides the politics of it, there is a huge humanitarian crisis unfolding on the borders. Can you tell us how bad the situation is there? 
indeed. Reports are in, uh, undef indefinitive because we don't know exactly what's going on. But Poland has banned journalists from getting close to the border. But different numbers are floating around. Around seven, eight or nine migrants have died so far at the border, mostly due to the incredibly cold temperatures in the forest. Consider that these are people from mostly Afghanistan, Iraq and other countries in Africa not used to negative temperatures. And makeshift fires are scattered all along the border for people to try and keep warm. Those that do make it across the border are helped by some NGOs, such as the Red Cross, with blankets and food, but often they're then sent back by the Polish forces to Belarus, stuck between the border of Belarus on one side and the border of Poland on the other side. Neither country willing to let the migrants go either way. So they are, in effect, trapped between there with little help, uh, little help available to them. Serious situation there unfolding. Thank you, Stuart Smith, for breaking that down for us.